Hey all you boost addicts, I wanted to just take a quick second here and just ask you all to please subscribe to the channel. I'm sitting at 500 subscribers and I'd love to try to get that pushed up over a thousand if we can. I don't really ever ask much and I put out as good of videos as I can and I think they're getting better. So if you appreciate that, please hit that subscribe button and let's get to a thousand subscribers. On to the rest of the video. Hey everybody, Tyler here with Boost Junkie Media and today we're gonna do a video. Um, we're gonna do something we haven't actually done before on video. I have done this before, I've just never recorded it and I've noticed that I haven't really seen any good videos or maybe any in general, but I haven't looked either uh, recently as to uh, for like updating the Holly Dominator or HP firmware to the latest, which is V6400. So we're kind of gonna go through that right now a little bit. So let me just kind of show you the laptop here. Um, so hopefully, I'm not gonna use any screen recording software. I'm just gonna record the laptop. So hopefully you can see here. So what we're gonna do, first thing we're gonna do is go look at the power settings. Uh, we wanna make sure the computer is not gonna go to sleep. You can see we're at 96%. And we're gonna go down here to screen and sleep on battery power, screen one hour, plugged in screen one hour on battery power, put the device after sleep after two hours when plugged in, put it to sleep never. So we're gonna go ahead and select this one on battery and just go ahead and select never. Uh, we are on battery power, but we're at 96%, so we should have plenty of juice. So there's no way that the computer should go to sleep now. And then what we're also gonna do, and this is per Devin's recommendation if I can Find where it is we're gonna go ahead and put it in airplane mode Just to make sure nothing Weird can happen or anything. Okay, so you saw all that. So that's where we're at um, So we do have this is a different laptop than what I normally use this does have v6400 on it and I did that because on the one I normally use, I didn't want to upgrade the laptop yet to V6400 in case there's a problem. And I also didn't really want to have two versions of the software on the laptop. I feel like that there's potential for bad things to happen with that. I'd like to just have the version that I need on the laptop. So the plan is to use this laptop. It's got V6400 on it. Go ahead and do the firmware update. And then assuming that all goes well, then I'll do the V6400 update on the actual tuning laptop that I use. So this is just like a additional laptop that I have. Okay, so I think we're ready there. Um, then once we're done with the Dominator, we're gonna go through and do the screen. I do have a Holly, it's not the Pro, but it's the seven inch Holly screen. So I've got the firmware for that loaded on this thumb drive here. And we'll go over that once this part's done, but I wanna get this done first. Okay, so let me go in the car here and I'll show you where we're at. Yeah, the car is off, the ignition is off. And what I've done is I've got a splitter here um, for the screen. So these connectors right here, if you can see these two, this connector here is a can connector for the screen, goes into this can splitter connector here. So I don't know that you have to do this, but I read somewhere or somebody said you should unhook all of your, like your can devices or whatever. So I went ahead and unhooked this during this update. It's just, I feel like that's probably the better way to do it. Um, and then I also, I do have a GPS uh, speedometer module too. And I went ahead, it's right here. And I went ahead and unplugged it from the um, USB ports, which are here. So these are the USB ports that come with the, if you get the, if you have a screen, it has these two for you to plug in like thumb drives. Well, one of those is used for that GPS module right there. So we've got everything unhooked. We've got our CAN stuff unhooked and we've got our USB connectors unhooked. We've got this connected here, which this has a connector on the back side, which goes to the actual dominator. The dominator is buried up under the dash there. So we're all connected up there. Um, so I think we're ready to do the update. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and turn the ignition on. plugged up here and as you can see here I can go 
online and it does tell me that I've got a version conflict but you can see it does sync and I've already got the config downloaded so we're gonna go ahead and go offline and we're gonna go to our little sync thing here we're gonna say upgrade firmware Performing your firmware update will erase the ECU's calibration before updating. Strongly recommended that the ECU's calibration download and save, which I've done. Would you like the calibration to be automatically downloaded and saved now? Calibration will be saved to a temp folder inside the global files directory. I'm going to say no because I already did that. Okay, so now we have to pick the firmware and we are going to go to this guy right here, which is our HEFI version 6 400. And we're going to say open. The upgrade is ready. Click OK to continue. And here we go. Okay, preparing BAM header. Sending BAM binary. And hopefully this won't take too, too long. Preparing to flash. It's flashing. Update was successful. The controller is now rebooting. Please be sure to cycle ignition power after loading your calibration. Okay, so we're gonna say okay. And we're just gonna kind of hang out here for a minute and let it do its thing. And in fact, I think I'm gonna stop the recording for a moment and then I'll come back once uh, everything looks like it's good to go. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we're up and running here. Um, so basically all I had to do is I gave it a, a second it rebooted. Once it uh, was done rebooting, I went here and went to USB link like this, and it gave me this warning. I still need to do that. A TPS auto reset needs to be performed. Please do before startup, which I'll do that. Hit okay. And then what happened was this was all blank. There was nothing here for the individual configs, and this was all blank. So that's because the config was wiped out. So all I had to do, um, what all I had to do was come over here and do open global file. I went to the global file that was in it. And then once it was open in the software, I clicked this, it gave me the same TPS auto reset. Everything was red, of course, because there was no configuration. So I just hit send to ECU and it sent it. And now you can see I'm all greened up. I'm online. Um, all my data is still there. So all my IOs should still be there. There's my inputs. There's my back pressure, my coolant pressure. There's my coil trigger that I just put in. So you can see that everything is there. So I think that has worked as it should. Um, I'm gonna do a few more checks and if there's something else that I need to check back with, I will actually, we'll go over one more thing real quick. So the other thing we're gonna do is now we're gonna do the screen. So I'm gonna load in. So I've got this thumb drive here and I'm gonna load it up and we're gonna open it here. And you can see here, I've got USB thumb drive. This is the root, and those are the two files that were in the Holly um, documents directory. So if you go in here, go in here, and you go to firmware, you've got seven inch digital dash firmware, that's the one I need. And from what I've, everything I've found, you just grab both of those files, stick them in the root directory of the thumb drive, and then basically you plug, you plug that in, so you cut the power to everything, you plug that into one of those USB connectors. Obviously you need to plug in the kin connector back to the Holly Dominator and then you turn everything on and when the screen comes on, it should automatically find the correct file 
and load the firmware. If it doesn't, then you can go through the options in the screen and update the firmware manually, but hopefully it will find it automatically. So I'm gonna do that next. Once I get ready for that, I'll go ahead and record that piece. Okay, so we've got our CAN connector plugged back in here. We've got our two USB devices here. So bear with me for a second. I'm trying to do this all with one hand and it should not matter. So we're gonna plug that in like that. And I'm just gonna lay that down there. And then all we should have to do, I believe, is turn the key on. Let me take this wheel off of here and we'll see. We turn that key on, that screen should come on and hopefully do the update. So let's see what it says here. All right, it's seeing the USB because you could see that little thing down in the corner that said uh, it's an eject button basically. So that's basically saying that it's seeing the USB, but it does not appear that it is loading proper, that it's loading the firmware automatically. So we have to go through here. So of course I'm not in the right position to do this because I really thought it was going to load automatically. So let's go to menu, utilities. Uh, to bear with me for a minute, I don't remember where it is. Configuration, update firmware. Once update process completes, your unit will start with new firmware. Click OK to continue. We're gonna hit OK. Updating software, please wait. All right, there it is. And so now if we go to menu, configuration, about, you can see now it says, and I should have looked at that there, right there, software version 60 build 203. So that's what it said in the firmware file. It said 60203 for the screen. I didn't look at it before, but I can almost promise you that that said whatever it was before. So we should be good to go. Um, we're gonna hit okay there. And we're gonna hit on here. Go back to dashboard. And that should be everything. So we should be able to kill it. And unhook our USB connector. And I think that's gonna be it. So I do need to do the TPS auto reset and then we'll fire it up and just make sure that it works. So I'll be right back for that. Okay, all right, we're back. So now we're gonna perform our TPS auto reset. And to do that, you go over here to the little sync window we're gonna hit that. We're gonna hit TPS auto reset. Please ensure that you're using it to. Yes, we have. Please make sure that the ignition is on and the engine is not started. When you're ready to, start, to begin, click start. Okay, so we're gonna turn the ignition on. Engine is not started, however. So we're gonna say start. Slowly press the pedal to the floor, then slowly release the pedal. pedal. Do this twice. All right, here we go. Floor, release, floor, release. Hit done. TPS auto set was successful. Okay, I think we're good. We're not online, so we're gonna go ahead and key off. And then let's key back on. Screen should come on.
and it did. Let's go online with our tune. You can see we're online. Uh, ECU time is synced, so we're online. So we're gonna go ahead and go offline, and we're gonna cycle the ignition one more time. And then this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire, just to make sure it runs. So we've got it in park, put on the brake, fire it up. I'm not going to let it run for very long, but I'd say we are successful. So we are good to go. So I know that maybe wasn't the smoothest process ever. It's not something that, you know, we do a whole lot, um, but that's the gist of it. So basically the keys are make sure the computer doesn't go to sleep. Uh, you know, put an airplane mode if you want to ensure that, you know, something's not going to cause an update or a restart or something in the middle of it. That was a pretty quick one. I know sometimes people say that they can take, you know, a long time, like especially going, if you're on like an old V4, maybe going to like a V6 or something. This was a fairly small uh, incremental upgrade. Um, so I, you know, I didn't imagine it was going to take too, too long, but yeah, um, it, it still. So you don't want the computer to go to sleep. So you got to change all your settings, make sure it doesn't do that. Uh, I didn't mention it, but you do want to have maybe some kind of like a battery tender or battery charger on the battery on the car. You want to make sure it's fully charged. This one was fully charged. I do keep a tender on it all the time. So it had a nice full battery. Um, and then just, you got to download the new version on your laptop and click the little sync button and then go to update firmware and do the, do the update. Uh, like I said, I deleted or unplugged the, um, the CAN bus connector for the screen. I didn't want anything connected to the CAN bus connector that could you know, cause an issue. So I opted to remove it out or you know disconnect it. I don't know that you need to do that, but I also don't think it would hurt. And then once it's done, once you get the Dominator or the HP or whatever updated and you have a screen, then once that's done, you can then use the thumb drive and plug it in and update the screen like I did. So. Uh, I think that's it for this video. It's probably a little longer than I meant for it to be. I guess I'm long-winded, uh, but it is kind of important information. Um, it is, you know, I do want to say give give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you guys can. Uh, you know, if this video or anything else has been interesting or useful to you, uh, hit hit the subscribe button for me. You know, I'm not I'm not monetized yet, and that's not the ultimate goal really. I like to you know put out videos and be informative to people to help because all of us at one point, you know, didn't, didn't know much or didn't know as much as we do now. And, you know, we've needed help along the way. Uh, so if you could though, give me a subscribe, um, you know, shoot me a comment in one of the videos, let me know what you like or what you don't like. I am open to constructive criticism, of course, um, and don't mind a little, a little friendly banter back and forth. So I think that's gonna be it for this video. So until next time, keep it boosted.